Hey, this is Natsur, and today this is Untitled. We're going to be talking about 8.5, general impressions on it. I also want to touch base with the Rogue Wave event, sort of the Benham topic. And then finally, I want to sort of theorize what the CC Summit announcement could be, because it is coming very soon. Now, 8.5 is live, and actually 8.5.1 is live now on every server. At this point, I did play on North America. I, I think for whatever reason, North America got the patch before everyone else. And I just want to talk about my impressions on 8.5. Obviously, 8.5 introduced a couple changes. The minimap, which was kind of frustrating, but with the hotfix, I'm happy to announce that you can now disable the ship name, if you so choose, with the minimap gear. It's no longer tied to alternative battle interface, so that's a nice little hotfix addition. But the biggest change that 8.5 brought was the increase in AA effectiveness. And I see the video, I see the hate, I see the love. You know, there's people who hate CVs and love CVs, and everyone has an opinion. But I hope everyone collectively can agree. Having a system in the game that's inconsistent and unreliable causes the player to not be as aggressive and engaged with the gameplay. You know, they might be more likely to just give up, not play, or do something different because it's so frustrating to see a system so significant as your AA system be completely useless. And that's the case for 8.4 and prior to 8.5. But now with 8.5, it's absolutely very effective and very consistent, something that carriers must consider. Now that consideration is a good thing, carrier players, because it's one of the ways that the surface ship can respect you. Because a lot of surface ships, they don't respect you. They don't respect anything about you. They feel like you are taking away their fun. And many of them probably still feel that. But at least with the AA changes and the potential priority sector system changes that who knows when that'll come out or what it's going to be, we can now have a discussion of legitimacy when it comes to carriers. It's not just, you know, kicking puppies. You're not going to do that because the surface ship has just as much impact over your squadron as you can have over their health, something that never existed prior to 8.5. So I'm all on board with that change because I want the game to eventually be completely balanced and for every class to feel like they have a chance. And I didn't feel like every class felt like they had a chance. Now, there are fringe examples, even in 8.5, of DDs getting wiped out. I see a lot of hate for the fringe DDs. Uh, they're afraid that you can't possibly play in a CV meta without smoke. And you know what? I kind of disagree on the simple basis that the speed of the fringe DDs is so extreme that if a carrier wanted to attack you, they would have to work very hard to even land anything on it, especially at high tier. Plus, main battery reload is a game changer. It is a tool so powerful that they have to limit it on a line that has no smoke because it's basically radar for DDs in a different format. You know, normally radar is used to spot a target, so that target and friendly targets can fire on it. But with the main battery reload tool, you can snipe enemy DDs in a point blank. You know, you can move across the map very quickly and have a lot of impact. And that is really rewarding. And I don't think that main battery reload would feel balanced if the French DDs had smoke. So clearly they can't have smoke and main battery reload the way it's designed. You know, you could have a, a half-baked version that's very weak, or you could have a high impact one with some counters. And obviously, Aircraft carriers are counters to DDs. They deny them the ability to hide in smoke, deny them the ability to hide with a concealment. That's the thing that the French have to overcome. If they can overcome, they will be effective. And it's something that has to be considered because that is on the horizon. 8.6 is the French DD early event access. I don't know exactly what tiers, but that's something that's going to be a part of 8.6. And... I love the French. I love the French DDs. They're really fun to play, really rewarding. I feel like 8.5 and beyond, we are in the right conversation. So 8.5.1 was the hotfix, and 
it gave 10 hit points to survivability expert and aircraft. Basically useless. I mean, it is one tick of continuous. Maybe it might make a difference in one out of 10 or 20 games. It, it felt like just a token buff. But that's okay, because I've already accepted the way to play. You know, you, you just can't go after these targets the same way. You've got to be patient. You've got to wait out their defenses with their teammates and their AA and make sure that your teammates are contributing. But that's a better way for the game to be designed. I am absolutely on board with 8.5's design, and I want to see more of it. Does that mean that the carrier is balanced and fair? No. The carrier has a completely useless, oh, well, nearly completely useless skill. The torpedo heal feels absolutely abysmal. With the improved AA, it's even less likely that a carrier would do a frontal attack on an enemy carrier. So we still have that issue to address, if we ever want to. My sort of counter to that is I'm just trying to keep them spotted with their worse air detection, using the fighter as that tool. And overall, the gameplay feels complete. It feels like you've got a nice rhythm of attacking, spotting, defense, offense, uh, different types of torpedoes, different types of dive bomber, different types of attack rockets. There's a lot of variety there. The only aspect that's sort of gone now is the extended attack with the squadron. I don't really feel like that's viable, but I don't necessarily know that I care. Because if I'm honest with you, extended attacks on a single target always end up costing you more than maybe you can get. Unless, of course, the target is just so isolated that there's absolutely nothing and he has no AA. Of course, of course. But 8.5 as a whole for me and 8.5.1 is a success. The game is better than it was in 8.4. And we will have to consider that because Clan Brawl is going to include aircraft carriers. So whether you like it or not, you got to learn how to fight them and fight them effectively and know what they're looking to do. And I feel like with the 8.5 carrier, there's much more strategy involved in the carrier's attacks and defense and whatever the carrier happens to be doing. So I'm all on board with that because I feel like that's what this game excels at. It excels at creating a scenario that isn't completely based off of reflexes. You have to consider your actions because everything is a little bit sluggish compared to your typical FPS, you know, just twitch shooter. So I like that. It's a nice variety in a space that is so dominated by super fast twitchy games. Now I wanted to talk about the Benham and the Rogue Wave event. I know it's a huge time sink. I know the event is really unfortunate in that regards. And it's kind of put, putting a black eye on it because, you know, you're asking players to give up the most valuable asset that they have, their time, with very little information to go off of. You know, all we know is that the event's running and then it's basically you need to be active for 23, 24 of the 25 days. We have no idea how the Benham's going to be sold. We don't even know if it'll ever be sold after this event. We have a general idea that, yeah, Wargaming doesn't want to make something and then get nothing from it past the first month. But we don't know how they're going to repackage it after the event. And I think that needs to be the case. You know, I don't think that it's nice to your consumers to deliberately hold back some information out of either you, you haven't finalized it or attempting to hold back information. Maybe players and people are more likely to spend money because they don't have enough information to make the perfect choice, right? I just hope that Wargaming moves more towards being more upfront. You know, we plan on selling this for a currency in game or, you know, being sold in the store at some point in the near future three to six months, a time frame where the person can weigh, you know, do I want to give up my whole July month to unlock the Benham, or can I just buy it in September? That's it. That's all I'm asking. If you would be more upfront, I'm sure people would be less likely to be angry over the massive amount of grind that's required. You know, it's okay to give something great for free, it's not okay to sort of deliberately hold back information, hoping that people are more likely to buy some containers or spend more money than maybe they want to out of fear that they're going to miss out. I feel like 
a lot of companies do this. They artificially inflate the time frame that things exist in a digital game. It's a digital game. You can choose to sell the Musashi anytime you want. You just chose to take it out and announce that you were taking it out so that people would be forced to decide, oh, short term, I need to do this. I just want it to be a little bit easier for the player base to feel confident in their choices. And I don't necessarily feel like we have gotten all the way there yet. And that's one of the few things that holds back this game and Wargaming as a whole from really pushing it into the upper echelon of developers. They just deliberately are a little bit more cagey. And I wish that they were less cagey and more upfront. I would be more, more than happy to be fully supportive of most of their actions if they would just do that one simple thing. Just... Just be a little bit more real with the player base, and I think they would appreciate that more. That's that's really where I'm coming from. I love the game. I love the community. I love the devs. I just want everyone else to find very little reason to be as frustrated as they seemingly are in forums and subreddit. And finally, let's talk about the CC Summit. So the CC Summit just went on. I did not attend family and all that stuff. It's cool. But something was announced, shown off. And for me, I just want to talk about what I think it is. I'm hoping that the priority sector system was shown off, the new one they've been teasing, more skill-related in the AA space. I think that would be a healthy design, causing players to show off their ability to defend their ship more is always healthy. And I think that carrier players can appreciate that as well. Now, one concern, carriers can't really actively do that. They don't have direct control for most of the time. Wouldn't it be nice if they did have a little bit more direct control over the AA as well when this system goes in, if it does? The other theory for me is Italians. I really hope that we get a picture of an Italian cruiser. I, I'm hoping that we can start the process of introducing them to the game because the Italian fleet deserves to be in the game. At this point, yes. DDs, cruisers, battleships, even carriers... They deserve. They were the most significant Atlantic fleet for the Axis powers next to the Japanese in the Pacific. They probably deserve to have a lot of their ships in the game. And maybe they have a unique gimmick. You know, we've seen the semi-penetration shells, armor-piercing shells. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the new game mechanic that's introduced for them. And that might also explain why... Ships like the Roma haven't really received any changes, even though the community as a whole feels like the Roma is underpowered. And to some extent, the consistency is definitely lacking. But the Italians would be exciting. The priority sector system would also be exciting if it's something cool and fresh and useful. I, I always have loved the shielding mechanics that the space combat games have had because it's, it's basically the same thing. You set up a defense around your ship, focusing your defense towards the incoming enemy threat and doing it in real time. It feels really good, and you have a, a limited resource, your power. In this game, it would be your AA mounts, just health as a whole. But uh, if we could get that ball rolling as well, priority sector being uh, polished and clean, the AA, the game is definitely moving towards a better tomorrow, and it's an exciting tomorrow. It's one I want to be a part of. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent and the most relevant uploads. You can also subscribe to my channel. I do daily World of Warship videos, first impressions, how to news and reviews. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.